BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Auto insurance is probably one of your larger expenses, so periodically take some time to see if it can be reduced. Check for discounts for paying in full versus monthly installments. Consider a higher deductible, improve your credit score, and lastly, don't be afraid to shop around. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Switch to Farmers and you could save an average of $437 on your home insurance. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Based on average nationwide annual savings survey dated July 2020 to 21. Underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Products not available in every state. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Tonight at 6 o'clock, please join me for this year's I'm Listening Special. It's a two-hour program talking about mental health awareness. And uh, as you know, this is something I'm passionate about. I'm living proof that if you take care of your mental health, you can do okay for yourself. Well, I mean, I'm semi-living proof, I suppose. I'm a lot better than I was. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's, I, mean, I can't say that. No one will deny that. We got members of Cage the Elephant, Duff from Guns N' Roses, Nikki Six, Chris Cornell's daughter, Lily, who's uh, got a new mental health podcast of her own. Uh, bottom line is this, man. Talk has the power to save lives. So please join us tonight. I'm listening. It's right here on The Rock, 6 o'clock. You want more info? Head to imlistening.org. Let's play Be Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. So everybody scream his name. Be Mix. Don't be a loser. Whoa. Be Mix. You're a loser. It is time to be Mix. But it's Wednesday, so we're... Maybe there'll be some whacking. Whack it. Let me see everybody do their Mr. Wacky then. All right. Whack it. And Steve was Mr. Wacky. Damn straight I was. He got a win earlier, but then also did get whacked by a chair so we could all have breakfast. Whack it. Worst of breakfast too, man. It was fantastic. If you missed it, go back and listen to the the earlier podcasts because... Uh, I gotta go then. Yeah, it's fantastic. (laughs) Let's get to our contestant today. We got Scott in Seattle. Scott, are you there? I am. Excellent. All right, Steve, get out of here. Goodbye. Whack it. For those playing at home, Scott will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Scott, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Where were the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights stored during World War II? Uh, Fort Knox. Yes. Which contiguous state is the only not to observe daylight saving time? Uh, pass. Mr. Potato Head was the first toy to be advertised over which medium? Television. Yes. Which of Shakespeare's plays is the longest? Uh, King Lear. No. Uh, pass. How many of Snow White's seven dwarfs have the name have a name ending in the letter Y? Four. No. Five. Yes. What is the tallest breed of dog in the world? Great Dane? Yes. What color eyes do most humans have? Blue. No. Brown. Yes. What is the lowest army rank of a U.S. soldier? Private. Yes. What is the name for a carved pumpkin on Halloween? Jack o' Lantern. Yes. The first episode of The Walking Dead aired in what year? Ooh. 2008. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Correct. Well, that's a tough one, that Walking Dead one, man. Yeah, you think? 
Yeah, I, I can't remember myself. Well, if you uh, think about how many seasons there are, that kind of gives you a little bit of a help there. And if you don't know how many seasons. Well, but yeah, think, if you don't know that, then I can't help you. I think I, could, I, think I would probably get around there. Yeah. I figure I'd figure it out. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, and, and Scott only had one guess at the end of there. That's so. the problem for Scotty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See if that's a problem for Stevie. Steve, are you ready? Where were the declaration? Where were the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights stored during World War II? The White House. No. Um, oh, uh, easy storage. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. At the uh, Pentagon. No. Which contiguous state is the only not to observe daylight saving time? Alaska. No. Oh. Uh, Arizona. Yes. Nice. Mr. Potato Head was the first toy to be advertised over which medium? Radio. No. Television. Yes. <laughs> which of Shakespeare's plays is the longest? Hamlet. Yes. How many Thank, of Snow White? Yes. That's all I got. How many of Snow White's seven dwarfs have names ending in the letter Y? Three. No. Six. No. Five. Yes. Okay. What is the tallest breed of dog in the world? Oh, that's easily a, a, a poodle. No. Uh, great thing. Yes. What color eyes do most humans have? Brown. Yes. What is the low? <laughs> wow. What is the lowest army rank of a U.S. Private. soldier? Yes. <laughs> what is the name for a carved pumpkin on Halloween? Jack o' Lantern. Yes. The first episode of The Walking Dead aired in what year? Ooh, I'm gonna go 2013. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But you still win eight to seven. Oh, sorry, Scotty. So close. So, so close. close. Buddy. Uh, well, good game, though, man. Good yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. I think Arizona makes a difference. I'll give it to you. Arizona or Hamlet. Yeah. Like, you knew those two. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I, I figured Hamlet would be one that you just would not get correct. Well, I mean... If you just said name a, a play by Shakespeare, I'd go like Hamlet, Othello. Wow. I would, that's about as far as it gets. I would have thought Romeo and Juliet and Macbeth, and then after that, it's just kind of a crap shoot. Macbeth. Macbeth. Oh, Macbeth. Uh, the one that, uh, the one that, you missed two of them. The first episode of The Walking Dead aired in what year? I'd be guessing, I'm going to say 2009, 2010. 2010. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's like, I think the 10th season, and uh, so 10 years, I, yeah, 10 I seasons. Know. I sort think of. so. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know anymore anyway. Uh, and then finally, the other one that you missed, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights were stored in Fort Knox during World War II. Oh, uh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Scott got that one correct. Come so, on, Steve. I'm sorry. I'm a bad American. Yeah. <laughs> but you're a good whacker because you won. Congrats. Thank yeah. you. Whack it. He is Here's a, a whack <laughs> Uh, a texture asks a question that actually comes up quite a bit from time to time. He says, why do you ask the last question and they only get one guess instead of three? It's kind of like basketball rules. Once the shot clock, hit, clock hits, mm-hmm. you, that ball needs to be in the air. You don't get another shot. Yeah, so you get one guess at that one and then that's it. Whatever question it is when the music does that little dun 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 yeah. So 60 seconds on the clock. Right. You only have 60 seconds to answer these questions. So you can get three passes, but if you just uh, run out of time, it's just no about more timing. passes. It's about yeah. timing. Yep. No more it- guesses are passes so if you don't know a question it's easier sometimes to pass so you can get to the other ones and maybe think about that one a little bit well that was a big question ah. and we got it right i think did we get it right yes okay good <laughs> oh someone has a good uh, point that we should be excited about for tomorrow because tomorrow's our kraken day right oh, yeah. oh right yeah kraken day here at of the rock says have you checked out the seattle kraken uh Pizza Farms uh, did uh on their corn maze in puyallup it's awesome from marco and puyallup i did it looks great i don't know if you've seen this Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I forgot about corn mazes. I guess you still can do that. I yeah. Guess, yeah, because you can go outside. You got a mask. Yeah, you can do corn mazes. Pretty sure Seattle Crack and put it up on their uh, social media page. Yes, they did on, on their oh, Instagram page. Oh, that's cool. There's like the Kraken and then the S logo at the bottom of it. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, that is really cool. And who did this? Uh, is it Picha or Picha? P I C H A Farms in Puyallup. I'm a terrible Puyallupian. I don't know the name of it. Yeah, I I, uh, I only know the Carpenito Take Brothers. That's the one. That's, that's, I, that's a, the one I go to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Same all about Maris Farms. Yeah, Maris Farms is cool too. Shout out to them. Well, I always just say Pizza. Pizza sounds good. Pizza, pizza. Hey, pizza. <laughs> pizza, pizza. Yeah. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Well, <laughs> you okay over there? I don't think he is. <laughs> I don't know. I just want to make sure I cover all bases. You gonna cover all the bases? Yeah. I right, joke and fix it in post. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here's the thing, man. We got this pandemic going on, and it turns out horror movie fans might actually be the ones better prepared to handle 
catastrophic situations like what we're in right now. And according to this new study... <laughs> Why, because they watch zombie movies? Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I, yeah, they're I, prepared. And, and so somebody said, all right, let's check this out. And so there's a Danish university researcher said, yeah, fiction allows the audience to explore an imagined version of what the world uh, they could be in. And they get to do it at very little cost. Through fiction, people can learn how to escape dangerous predators, navigate novel, uh, novel social situations, practice their mind reading and emotion regulation skills. Why, and especially if that's what you're doing, if you're watching a lot of horror movies or post-apocalyptic stuff or anything at all where there's a catastrophe that the characters are dealing with, I suppose in a way you're in there dealing with it too. And you learn how to run with balance because you don't want to fall down, otherwise Jason Voorhees will get you. That's it. Yeah. And a lot of negative emotions come at you during horror movies. I mean, if you really get into it. In a weird way, because like, it's something that maybe you're like fascinated with. Like you love like stories of like, you know, pandemics maybe or like zombie apocalypse. So like when you're in this weird state of mind that we're all in because of what the world is like. In the back of your head, like, oh, it's kind of like one of my movies that I love. So, so maybe, maybe it helps you cope with it a little so bit. So A Quiet Place, Bird Box, maybe they helped us after all. Maybe Netflix was getting us ready for some of this stuff. I mean, look, man, I've been watching Idiocracy for years now, and yeah. I, I feel like I'm in a good spot because of it. I think you are. Yeah, they're saying that according to... I'm not as to bothered by things as most people. Yeah, well, see, you're not bothered by stupidity. You knew it was coming. Oh, it's Pika. Oh, Pikachu. Oh, oh sorry about that, Pika, Pika Farms. Farms. Yeah, we're bad. We're bad at pronouncing words that aren't aren't words that we know. Yeah. <laughs> pika, 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 pika. Okay, take a peek at the farm. Think, I think you know. Oh, take a peek at the farm. Take yeah. a peek. That's all I remember. Hey, take a peek. You wow. see the Kraken thing when I mean, you take a peek at this farm. The, the Kraken corn maze. That too. That's what it is. It's a corn maze. I know that. <laughs> okay. The Kraken thing. Yeah, it's uh, the it's thing. The, it's the Kraken corn maze over there. You know? Take a peek. Okay. Hey, you know what time it is? It's time for you to take over this show. I think it's probably the right time. They released the Kraken at the peak. They, they, yeah, they, they did, yeah. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206-421-ROCK, Texas at 77999. It's time for Release listeners the on the loose. You call us your text at 917. On the Rock. BJ and Mix Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show at 206-421-ROCK. You can also text us at 77999. This is your opportunity to make your words be heard. But Steve wants you to do those words in a particular way. It's just to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we got to gong you. And then say goodbye to you. Goodbye, old friend. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Earlier, we were talking about things that you just can't get rid of because there was a guy who has a half-eaten sandwich from Richard Nixon from 60 years ago. Today is the 60-year anniversary of him taking that sandwich, and he still has it frozen in a jar. Uh, somebody says, I have a taxidermy alligator head that my mom gave me when I was like six. I've had it ever since. I'm about 30 now from Nate, the snake guy. Yeah, you see, that's the kind of thing, even though it's weird maybe to some people, but your mom gave it to you. And, you know, eventually your mom's not going to be around in your life, you know, if, if, if things go the way they normally go. And that's going to be what you'll have to remember her by. Yeah. I mean, if it's always you're into that, I don't know if I'd really want like a, an alligator head in my house. Unless I put it somewhere fun, like in the shower. Oh, yeah, that's exactly where you got to put it. Like, like peeking out of the curtain. Yeah. Oh, I was wondering if it would be your shower head, because that'd be pretty sweet. Oh. oh, like coming out of the alligator's mouth, the water. That's yeah. a good idea. Ooh. I wonder if I could run that by the home builders. Oh, like, sure I know you fine. wrapped up everything on our new house. But yeah, but we have one more thing. <laughs> that sounds like a DIY. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody even asked about the, the, a show have we watched, and I actually was just watching it the other day. It's like Flipping 101. Have you seen that one? Uh-huh. It's a great show. It's about like people who decide to try... The uphill battle that is flipping a home. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And all the trials and tribulations that happen. So it's brand new home flippers meeting with a guy who like really like he ate dirt for many years in a sense in the world of house flipping and then eventually become like this super successful home flipper. And he kind of guides them along the way. But it's fun to watch because he'll give advice and some of them are just like, no, no, we want blue tiles. And he's just like, that's a stupid idea. But I'm like, I, I can't tell you not that it's your money. Uh, but it's an interesting watch of like just how difficult it is to try and flip a home. But one of the homes they went into, this woman bought it sight unseen because you couldn't go in. I guess it was like an auction. Spent like a half a million dollars on the house, Whoa, right? Oh, that's a lot of money. But she's like, it's California. I'm going to be able to jump the price up to like $800,000 or whatever. They go in the house and it apparently was like a house of a hoarder that had like a hundred and something bunny rabbits. Oh, oh no. no. Dude. 
it was like little bunny droppings everywhere. Oh my god! I mean, the guy was like, "It's going to cost like eighty thousand dollars just to renovate this house." Like, it's you got. I can't believe why would you buy a house without going inside of it? She's like, "Oh, I thought it would be a good idea." <laughs> oh, that's like, a great impression. Yeah, it was Marge Simpson. Yeah, homie, I, I don't that. know. But it's a fun watch, man, just to see, like, the process. I love those kind of shows. It gives you, gives you ideas. And, like, some of the mess-ups are great. Like, they got a marble counter, but they got it in two different shades of white. And, like, no one will notice. For You know, they have cameras and for people that are prospective home buyers. First person that comes in goes, why are the counters different colors? <laughs> like, you're going to notice that. But they didn't want to drop another $3,000 to fix it. Whoa. This is so bizarre because these are all designed to sell homes. Like, you know, they that's what home flipping is. Yep. And the fact that people would have preferences or would leave glaring things out there so they would make it more difficult to sell a home. That's hysterical that people are that dumb if they're in the home flipping business. Well, like you said, like this is, you know, you make a lot of mistakes in the early stages. I think that's why the show is so interesting because I think people go into it trying to flip a house, not realizing how difficult it is. But like oh, even like yeah. the... The ones that were very, very difficult, like at the end of the day, they, they did all the stuff and they ended up making like seventy, eighty to $100,000. That's your life. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if I could do that. That's your life, you know, and a lot of folks try to do it themselves because that's, you even save more money if you can do the work yourself. That's more money in your pocket. That's why I, I thought about doing it too. I went to a Robert Allen course to teach me how to do that. And uh-huh. this guy was big on teaching you how to basically home flip. Oh, I couldn't, yeah. And you know what he did? He flipped the money out of my checking account into his account. That's all that happened. That was the only flip. But did he teach you a valuable lesson that this is not for you? Oh, yeah. It was so a very, then, boom. it was a four-figure <laughs> lesson, Steve. Oh, oh better yeah. than five figures? Oh, man. He saved you in the long run, BJ. Yeah. My God, I, I, I still think about the fact that I can't believe I gave that guy all my money. Congratulations to him, you know? I thought, hey, this will be a way for me to get rich. I'll tell you what happened to me was there was a way that you can make money off of people when you're buying houses off them. They call mm-hmm. them distressed sellers, which is a nice way of saying people Desperate. have S going down in their life and you basically cannibalize their equity because they're, they're in a position where they can't really do anything. Divorce, stuff's going wrong, deaths in the family. And I just thought... Oh, I can't make my money like this. I mean, I'm stealing their equity. I mean, it's legal because you're able to go, look, I'll give you X amount of dollars now if you give me the house. And they go, well, I need the money right now. I can't wait to put it on the market and sell it. So you, the, the equity that's in their house, they really don't get because you've undercut it so badly because you're giving in cash right now. I couldn't make my living that way. I felt like that was just almost, I know it's legal, but right. I felt like it was stealing. It's like, hi, I'm Bob. Would you like to take advantage of your fellow human? Oh, yeah. I'm your guy. Yeah, and I yeah. just couldn't do it. And it felt like that was a big part of at least what I had to do to be a successful flipper. I always love the signs that you see on the street that just say, buy your house cheap. Trying exactly. To sell your house. But it's like written on the back of like a, a cardboard box that yeah. they just cut and they wrote with a Sharpie. I'm like, well, I don't know if you're necessarily the person that I think has the uh, the, the the know-it-all or wear it all to what is the term? Wear it all. Uh, wear wear it all. Thank you. Good job, Rest. It's early. The wear it all. No, yeah. I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, you don't trust that guy. He doesn't have the credibility. Right. If you're not yeah. capable of making a nice sign, I don't know if you're capable of making me a good deal for my house. They taught me that in my class, too. Like, the, See, I buy houses cheap and all that. What, to make yeah. a cardboard sign? Well, they, they they told us to do better than that, but that person obviously didn't listen. Oh. He should be on that new flip, you know, the home or whatever. The There's flip so many of those signs everywhere, though. Yeah, well, that's why I, that's another reason why I thought, wow, I'm not the only idiot that went to this course. So many people are doing it. Yeah. And that's a sign. Every time I see one of those signs, they go, oh, did you pay that big money, too, to figure this out? Because I did. Someone says there's a YouTube guy who has a home flipping series called This Old Crack House. <laughs> oh, damn. For real? What? I want to watch that. And he's basically taking crack houses and flipped them, like renovated and flipped them. Is that the idea? Well, I know, like my buddy, he was like, he was doing like home renovations and things, and like he was flipping some homes, and he would send us pictures on our group chat, and it was just like where he would find like drugs and different things in people's homes that he yeah. went to, to to flip. But he was just like, man, this place clearly liked the party. Yeah, it was just like insane the stuff that was going on in there. Yeah, man. That's. I mean, look. If I you, like watching them on TV. I don't want anything to do with yeah, it. Yeah, me It's too much work. Yeah, it's more uh, fun just to watch them. I know a couple people that do do it, and they make a living doing it. And look, you got to do something in life. You got to make a living. So, See, for me, if I can't fix something with crazy glue or duct tape, I'm not capable of Oh, you're of done? It's over? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or toothpaste and paste to fill in the walls. Yeah. <laughs> that was college. I've, I've now gotten the little squirty spackle thing. No, that's right. You're right, yeah. A little squirt squirt. little squirt yeah. squirt. I am, and then it turns white when it's dry, BJ. It's, it's, it's idiot proof. Yeah. I, 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 I say that, although I'm much more impressed with people 
people that actually have skills, like carpentry skills. Oh, not yeah, not gorilla glue skills. No, yeah, I, I find them more impressive. Or, or people that have good outdoor survival skills, like you know, they can look at a tree and, and they know exactly what they need when they see that tree, and they can maybe make herbal pastes and stuff on all these poultices, and they can live off the land and all this stuff. I, I like I watch the show alone. I'm impressed by people that can do mm-hmm. stuff because I can't do anything. Yeah, if no. There, if there are no supermarkets or Home Depot, not even what I Home Depot. I hire people, so if yeah, there are no supermarkets <laughs> or Angie's List, I'm screwed. I, it's not, I'm, not, I'm done. There's nothing I can do. Well, I did love on that show, the Flipping 101 show. It was funny because like the guy was just like, "Look, you screwed up the tile work right here. Like it looks like you had a rush job." Like, well, we knew someone who gave us a deal. He's like, "It's very apparent." He's like, "But he, it was an interesting lesson." Like he's like, "The minute a home buyer sees that." All of a sudden, it's going to trigger them to look for every single little screw up in that house. Yes. And sure as that's, you know, who knows how scripted these stupid shows are, but I'll still buy them hook, line, and sinker. But the person saw the, 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 the crappy work that they did on the tiles. And then the rest of the time, they're like, well, I wonder, like, look at this thing, look at that thing. It just starts like a domino effect of them trying to find every flaw with the house. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. a good point. See, that guy knows his stuff. I like that. No, he was good, man. It's a fun show. I don't know what channel it's on, but like you know, hopefully your wife is watching it when you walk out into the house. It's got to be HGTV, like, I, right? It's HGTV. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, it's the. I think it's the same guy from Flipper Flop. Oh, also, excuse me. Yeah, that was the show. Like him and his now ex-wife. Oh, you know Flipper Flop, Rev. Yeah. I'm not a flip or flopper. Oh, that's a fun show too. Yeah, they, they renovate the house and they decide if they want to keep it. Right? Is that that one or that's it's, they're, they're, love it or list it? There's all these shows. Love, love See, you are you, you are in the, you're in the nesting phase of your life because my wife and I did all of these HGTV shows back in the day when we bought our first house, and I remember one show designing for the sexes. And it was, it was, it was, which was talk about how dated this show was. It basically to get a man and woman together so they can figure out how to interiorly decorate. And they had to get this guy named, I'm Michael Page. And he'd walk in and he would go, here's how to design for the sexes. He wants this, but she doesn't want that. I have to bring them together. See, they should do it with us. It would just be like designing for the sexes where the husband just doesn't care. Because that would be our whole show. Be like, you should do this. And I was like, I love it. And they're like, what do you think? See, I'm like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Am I paying for it? No? Yeah, go ahead. That's yeah. great. <laughs> that, yeah, that's probably why they wouldn't have you on the show. Those shows are dangerous, though, right now in the middle of... Uh, I'm sure, Vicky, when you bought your house, they were dangerous, too. It's Because it's like, all of a sudden, it's planting new ideas. Oh, yes. And it's like, we should do this, we should do that. And I'm like, put it on the list. See, I go <laughs> on down... the bottom of the list. I go down the Facebook watch wormhole with, like, the DIYs and, like, the home talks and stuff. I'm like, oh, painting your own cabinets? Well, that's easy. They did it in 30 seconds. I can do that. I yeah. can't do that. It's like no. watching those people cook things on Facebook. And it's yeah. like, it just took two minutes to cook this insane, like, yeah. dessert. And then, like, you try and it's just a giant mess. And you That's just right. decide to go buy a pie from Sherry's instead. That's right. the thing to do. <laughs> Not a bad option. Which, no. by the way, this just shows you, I would, without Sherry's, I would never be able to get you a, a tasty dessert either. Oh, someone says, Steve, look at those signs closely, the ones that are, like, all handwritten on cardboard. It looks that way on purpose, and they've brought in massive amounts. It's a big flipping company. Interesting. Well, I guess so. Do they make it sound like that you're not some big fancy company going to try to take advantage of them? So maybe the, that kind of sign seems like there are regular people. Will it just give seems you a like a dude deal? in Graham that's just here to help. Yeah, he's like, ah, look, I'm not, I'm not going to waste my time on signs. I'm going to waste my time selling your house. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's an interesting procedure. I'll tell you, man, especially, you know, the folks that will buy your houses for cash. I mean, to be able to go, look, we're going to do this right now. You don't have to worry about this, that, the other thing, approvals, nothing. I'll buy your house right now. It'll be cheaper than what you could get if you put it on the market, but you'll get it now. Yeah. Which is, you know, again, I felt like, oh, I just don't, oh, I don't want that. Because who's going to contact them? That's the cool thing when you think about it. We'll buy your house now for cheap or whatever. Then desperate people who want to sell it now will be the mm-hmm. ones to call. Oh, for sure. So they're not even going like, to take the time to check anything else out. They're like, okay, we got a buyer. Let's of course, go. in this market, I mean, it's a, such a seller's market. I don't know how those folks are making any money because, like you said, your neighborhood was selling houses in six days. Dude, it's nuts. Yeah. So I, I don't know how these, these, these so-called, we'll buy it now people are doing in this, in this situation. Going back to the topic of things that you just won't let go of, no matter how weird or strange it might be. Someone texted him saying, believe it or not, this is absolutely 100% true, and I've seen it. I live next to an individual who has in their possession... The pop icon shares hat. That's right. I've lived next to her hat. On special days, he will bring it out so we can admire the greatness. He caught the hat during a concert. Oh. Shares hat. I had a neighbor that had like a weird collection. Like when I first moved into our now soon to be old house, 
they had like the strangest stuff, like of anything. Like if you had like a wrestling thing, he had it. If it was a movie, he had like the original trap from the Ghostbusters. Or, and, Whoa! And, like, yeah, dude. Like I mean, wow. some of them like were really cool. Other ones were just like, why do you even have this? Like he had a hat of a certain I can't remember who, but it was like a singer. And he's like, oh yeah, I got. Oh, it was like someone from ACDC. It wasn't like even the main guy. It was just like one of the members. He's like, this is their baseball hat they wore once, and it shows like it's embroidered and it's got all like the sweat stains. And yeah, that's a little. That yeah. one was weird, but like yeah. the Ghostbusters trap was pretty cool. Yeah, a prop from a movie. I think he used is to cool. own a DeLorean from Back to the Future. Oh, 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 badass! Man. Yeah, yeah. See, that's you're talking Paul Allen level there. Yeah, dude. That's the, I, I'm pretty sure that's how the guy made his living. Like yeah. he got to the point where he was buying and selling enough. That he was able to make enough profit, that's how he paid his bills. Oh, that's cool if you can make a living doing what you love. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you know, though, I don't, you know, if if it starts turning into a job, though, that's what irritates me. Like, I don't want to work with something I love, which I know people go, do something you love. And I'm like, I don't want to. I want what I love to be fun and a hobby, you know, uh, as opposed to my job, you know? Not that I don't love doing this, but I mean, I wouldn't want to, like, play board games for a living. I feel like that'd be a pain in the ass. Really? Yeah, I do. I'm pretty sure that that would be like the one thing you would love to do. Um, and you get to do it for less hours than what you do it right now. I've, I've talked to some people in the business. That it's not less hours at all, Steve. They they, they you, you do 11 hour days. Oh, I, yeah, you're right about that. Well, <laughs> for them, they, but they're playing games they don't like. They have to oh. listen to everything. Then they got to do reviews. Then they got to sit and listen to people complain about the reviews. They got to go he online. Would, he would overthink this whole thing. <laughs> going back to the earlier topic. Yeah, you would a, go. Danny, I mean, I know guys in the business and I talk to them. I know you think it would be, everybody thinks that this would be a fun thing as a job, whatever you think of. But I happen to know people in the business and they're like, no, oh, I know you're not, right. It's not as fun as you think. I've known my share of like video game testers and they're like, it's fun at first. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Like when at first you're like I can't believe I have a buddy in college his job I don't think this job exists anymore but his job was to watch adult films and he to make sure that the time was right on the adult films you'd think that would be a great job yeah but after a while like you're like dude this is just really messing with my mind like you know my relationship is suffering from this but like he wanted to be in the world of television and that was the closest he got was that for a while like he worked at a porn company and he would just sit in a room. And start a stopwatch to make sure that the running time that was labeled on the cassette back in the VHS days wow. was 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 right. Yeah, that would be. And there was no weird glitches, so it was like quality control while also making sure the time was right. Yeah, that does. That does. That, I think that would get old quick for me. Yeah, yeah, that would get very old quick. For and, me. and I bet there better be a lock on that door. <laughs> well, there is that too. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, because after you can only so much, and then you're just watching them. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. You pick the topic, you guide the show. It's listeners on the loose, 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. We got more of your calls, more of your texts at 934 on the Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on the Rock, 99.9 KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Are you saving for your child's college education? If so, consider a 529 plan. To find your options, visit savingforcollege.com. You will find a comprehensive list of other states' plans along with details, rankings, tools, and calculators. That's savingforcollege.com. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit kisw.com slash BECU. Bundle multiple policies for savings of up to 45% on your farmer's auto insurance. It's like a buffet without the regret. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available with select Farmers branded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges, Farmers New World Life Insurance Company, or affiliate. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Uh, so it says, do you guys have a celebrity's phone number in your cell phone? If so, who? I have Bill Nye's number. He's a family friend. Bill, Bill, Bill. I like that they made a point to say Bill, Bill, Bill. That is so cool. I would just text him that all the time. Bill, Bill, Bill. Actually, we've got, I I think I've got a couple. How about you? You must have a few yourself. Well, I mean, because of work, there's, I'm I'm trying to think like what would be the biggest name. And Walter Jones, I always think is kind of cool. Walter Jones is a pretty big name. Yeah, he's become such a good friend of the show. I think for me as a wrestling fan, Oh man, like there's been several because either they were just like, you know, up and coming guys I would get to know and then now they're in the WWE. But I think the biggest one is, is Edge, Adam Copeland. 
which is still pretty cool and pretty oh, that's surreal. Because cool. we get a, we had a fun interview with him. Uh, Rev and I did many years ago. Yeah, and we talked about Pearl Jam. We were just talking about music because he's a big Seattle music fan. And then ended up like he got my number from the handler, and he sent me a text just saying how much fun he had, and he loved to go check out like London Bridge Studios whenever he comes to town. And still to this day, just out of the blue, we'll randomly like get a text about the dumbest stuff. It's never about wrestling. I would never bug him about wrestling, but like he'll send me like, "What do you think of a new Pearl Jam song?" or or something random along those lines. That's cool. Yeah, he's an awesome. I mean, could be a nicer guy. And like you always hear that, like you know, in all these documentaries that talk about it. But like I don't know him, so I'm like I don't know. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy because you're like a fellow wrestler. But he's legitimately one of the nicest guys. And like we'll like just randomly said like he sent me a message one time just being like I'm wearing a Citizen Dick shirt and I thought you'd appreciate it. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> awesome. It's a, it's a fake band from Singles. Yeah, and that's I thought that was awesome. kind of cool. I've, I, and I always take it as a badge of honor when any celebrity would give a radio guy or girl their phone number because of our, we, we, our industry just has a, a prank call history. Take advantage of it. Exactly. I've I mean, sold his number to a few people, but that's not. Yeah, well, no, that's there. different. You're not, you're, not, you're not abusing it. They are. That's a whole different story. Uh, Rev, you got anybody famous that you can think of? Uh, just looking. I was actually looking through my contacts list, and uh, uh, the first one that came up was Louis Anderson. Oh, wow. And it, it's because of the show. Still, you got it. But yeah, yeah, I've got a lot of other random comedians, too. That's cool. And, 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 and yeah, I do remember that Louis just gave you the number. You're like, okay, this is Louis' number. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's okay. great, Louis. I, I won't call you because that would seem weird. You but. should like find like a random like on Easter, say, hey, happy Easter, Louis, and see if he <gasps> sends you something back. That would be fun. I bet he would. Louis is such a good dude, right? Yeah, he's such a nice would. guy. He probably actually would without not even remembering who I am. Probably, I don't even know who this is. Yeah. I'll just send it. Have thanks a lot. He's got the biggest heart. I mean, he really. Uh, you know, uh, he he might be. Like, and it's tough because I've met a lot of nice people in the entertainment business, but he might be the nicest. He's definitely in the top three. All right, Vicky. Vicky, you got anybody? The one, I know I have a comedian because he asked for me to send him something directly to his phone, but I can't remember who it was. But the one that came up in my head first was Will Wheaton's wife. Will Wheaton. And Wheaton. Oh, Which yeah, is Ann. so bizarre because I mine is mm-hmm. Will Wheaton. You've got his wife in your yeah. phone and I've got Will in my phone. It's pretty hysterical. Because I've gotten to interview her a couple times for Geek Nation and one time she came into the studio and she's like, oh, here's my phone number. You know, you know, call me or I'll call you and stuff. Wouldn't it be great here. if we terrorized both of them together and they'd be like, I can't believe both of us are getting terrorized by different people at but the about same the, time. At the same time, about the same thing. I mean, you'd, you'd want to terrorize somebody who you know would deserve it. She's just so nice. I know they really are good people. The, we- the Wheatons are good kids. Those kids. <laughs> the texture says I have Rain Wilson. He's in my phone. He was interested in buying my Mercedes Benz Sprinter van. I still have a voicemail from him too. Nice guy. Wow. How about that? I'm a little jealous because I'm a big Rain Wilson fan. What about Danny? Kel Penn. Oh, oh really? Cool. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's yeah. cool. We had Kumar. him on our, he Harold or he was Kumar. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we had him on our show in Albuquerque one mm-hmm. year. It was like 2012. And after the show, I took him to get breakfast burritos and we were just kind of, you know, talking and yeah, and after wow. that we texted each other for a few years, but I don't I don't even know if it works anymore. Text him and wish him happy Easter and see what happens. Okay. <laughs> right Ask him how the president is, President Bush. Don't do that. Yeah. Did you, did you really smoke pot with President Bush? Yeah. Or was that an actor? <laughs> was it fake? I think it was probably fake. Yeah. Probably. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, there's a, I mean, there's a lot. I remember, though, I'd I be afraid change. of being wasted, though, in, like, you know, like a random, like, time in Spokane and be like, oh, hey, look whose number. I'll text them right now. Like, I would be so worried to do that. Sometimes. I changed their names in my phone because I thought, what if I lose my phone? Oh. But this was back before you had, like, you could lock your phone. Mm-hmm. Anybody could just say, and I actually did have my phone stolen right from my pants at a party. We so were, how would you know who was who? Well, I, 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 knew, I knew who it was, but I would just, I changed their last name where I would know that, oh, this what? is this guy. But Bill the, Gates, dot, 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 the plumber. Like, I would say, <laughs> I, I would play, I, I'd probably put, like, uh, you know, Bill Doors. You know, I, I, so something like that. I would put in the thing so that something I would Something uh, slightly close to yeah. it, so it'll probably trigger your memory. Yeah. That way, that way, so if like, somebody saw, because I would feel horrible if my phone got stolen. This is, you know, like what twenty years ago when we had the flip phones or whatever. I'd feel horrible if all of a sudden, you know, Bill Gates, if I had his number, we'd be getting calls from people because I left his number. So on So I'd phone. like it'd be like Richard Hemsley. Exactly. You know who that would be? Who, who, uh, no, who's that? Come on, Richard Hemsley. If I change the last name, like how you did Bill Gates to Bill Doors, Hemsley is like Richard. Sherman. Richard Sherman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How'd you get that? Sherman Hemsley from the Jeffersons. Thank you. Oh, geez. Okay, that's why I didn't get it. Yeah, I was just like, the only Hemsley I know is Sherman. Oh, Richard Sherman. Me too. Yeah, I mean, as I was about to yell at Steve for making the Hemsley line, I finally got it. 
Good job, Steve. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. So, Don't you ever talk about me? Sorry, we well, sorry about that, Richard. <laughs> we, we, you gave him his number. Every, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. This is a joke, right? Yeah. Well, it is kind of mediocre. Yeah, that's a fact. I am Richard Sherman. Ah, uh, you know what? At this point, I think a lot of us do now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with her on that. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that girl is the greatest. <laughs> is the best. <laughs> yeah, uh, boy, oh boy, you know. And she was a 49ers fan, so I mean, I'd love to like. I wonder if anyone ever did a follow up with her. Oh, I would love to have that to say. So, what do you think of Richard Sherman now? Like he needed to visit her. Like after that should have been like the first stop of his like. Goodwill to San Francisco tour. Yes, he just shows up to the crazy girl's house. <laughs> Yeah, there you, you hate me is. now. Um, you hate me now. I mean, I'm in. Uh, I, I'm on your team now. Oh, someone says I have the phone number to the composer of Star Trek: The Next Generation. Oh, cool. Alexander Courage, I believe, is the guy's oh, name. Really? Yeah, I think it's Alex. Yeah, I well, you know, that's I'm, impressive, dude. I mean, there is not a lot I know, and I realize why because I have a spot in my brain for Alexander Courage's name, where maybe I could have put something important in there, like how to change a tire or something. But no, instead, that spot in my brain is reserved for that guy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I they, they, that guy made some good stuff. So he says, uh, I had a crazy story about a time that I was just recently dumped. This was about six months ago, and I was dumped because I had a cavity. I was dating somebody that parent was a dentist, and they were just embarrassed. What the f? Well, it sounds like you dodged something there, buddy. Right? Could you, like that? I, I would thank that person for dumping me. Yeah. What? I feel like they're either crazy or they just had to come up with a reason. And they didn't know what else to come up with. And that's the best reason they came up with? That's how bad it was. Like, they had to get the hell out of Dodge so quickly. They were like, I got to come. All right, my father's a dentist. You have a cavity. Could This will work. Right. I, can't, I, I can't bring you into my house now. Otherwise, you're an insane person. I mean, everybody had cavities, right? Or, or is there No, a- not everyone. My wife's never had a cavity. You what? Wow, she's a younger person. I guess the younger people did get protected a lot better than we did. Yeah, I didn't have my first one. By what, the cavity monsters? Well, they used to put stuff on your teeth. Fluoride. Yeah, well, not the fluoride. The sealant is what Danny, yeah. Oh, yeah, they put sealant on your teeth to be able to stop cavities the way. They didn't put that on our teeth. They put fluoride on our teeth, but they never put the sealant in my day, which is why I had four million cavities. I did not know that. Oh, hey, learned something new today. So, Vicky, you didn't know what they were doing in your mouth, huh? I thought they were just putting fluoride in. Yeah, well, they were putting a little bit more in there, and you better be careful next time you go to the dentist. This is getting weird. Sorry. And I'm out. All right, here's a question. What is a song that makes you feel like a kid again? I don't know if it's a kid, but it brings me back to my younger years. Whenever I hear Flagpole sit up from uh, Harvey Danger, it brings me back to like my mid-20s. Ooh. Just moved to Seattle, playing the music scene. I remember getting a copy of that record before it came out, and that was like our summer record. Like We just drove out in my stupid station wagon. Like My bandmates, we would always like just listen to that because they were like our buds, and we were so proud that they put out a record. And so like whenever I hear it, it just kind of comes back to that moment. Oh, that's cool. But as a kid, I mean, anything by Kiss... That I makes think, sense. You know, I think about like setting up all my pillows in my bedroom and playing the opening thing to strutter and all that like, on the on my quote unquote pillow drums. Oh, pillow drums! That's yeah. fair. I, I That's never knew cool. that people pillow drummed. I don't know if people did. This idiot did. Oh, all right. This idiot being me. I think that actually is a great idea. <laughs> I think pillow drumming. I remember pillow drumming. If ever I have any friends that go, my kid wants a drum and there's a drum set, I go pillow drumming will save everything. What about Danny? Um, I think Michael Jackson's Black or White. Ooh. I remember <laughs> when I was in kindergarten, that was like I begged my mom to buy me that album or the cassette, actually, because I wanted to listen to that song. For some reason, it just was like it stuck with me. So anytime I hear that song, I'm like, oh, I remember being in kindergarten. Yeah. Well, if you're talking about when it takes me back to being a kid, it's got to be was Beethoven's it? Fifth. OK. That's what I said. Star Spangled Banner when it was first written. Oh, I should let you. Yours was better than mine. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you guys were going to be cruel to me, so I figured I'll be cruel to myself. It's always, you know, disarm your, your, your enemies. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Rev? It would actually, like, going back to my, my younger ages, it would be uh, Def Leppard's Hysteria. Because oh, yeah. it was always, I'd only listen to that or sticks or any of that music when I was with my, the, the quote unquote cool uncle. And uh, so it was just kind of cool to, like, just, like, hang out with him. So that was the big ones for me, man. Um, our, yeah, and I have to say, you bring up sticks, bands like Sticks and Ario Speedwagon, which were huge when I was in my teens in the late seventies, early eighties. Uh, those when I hear, especially Ario Speedwagon, because you don't really hear them anymore. Uh, when they come on, it really flashes me back. To I that. bet, yeah, because it's like that's exactly who was just dominant. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song was just texted yeah. in. That's oh, a good nice. one. Nice. See, I immediately thought like Kid. 
I didn't actually think of bands. I just thought of really dumb songs that we loved, like the chicken dance. Oh. <laughs> the mockery. Oh, man. Right? Like, you can't help it. Just like... That's what I miss from weddings, yeah. by the way. Yeah, if your wedding doesn't have the chicken dance, your wedding sucks. Yeah. And not everybody does, by the way. Some of these kids are doing their own thing with no chicken dance. Doing the damn floss dance. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, where, where did yeah. that come from? Floss to this. Dozy dope, bitch. La, 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 la. Hope they have white on white cake, then. Of course they do. It's a wedding. Why wouldn't they have white on white cake? Devil's food <laughs> and red velvet. That should be the wedding. Okay, that's a fun song. <laughs> By the way, I just re- recreated every conversation I've had with my wife at weddings. Oh. We all at the table, and I always invariably go, "Gosh, I hope that's a white on white cake." <laughs> and my wife's hey, like, get, "And you getting mad about the cake?" Well, because Ooh. she'll go, "Come on, when, when do they not?" And I'll go, "Do you remember the last one we were?" I mean, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> that's our table conversation, my wife and I. At the I like this text. It says, "Tag team." Whoop! There it is. Whoop. Tag team there back again. There it is. That's a Mighty Ducks Whoop. reference yeah. too. Okay. Is playing in this in Mighty Ducks too when they're when Come they take on, on the, the street kids. Oh, that's yeah. why it takes me back to. Sheesh. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's a deep cut. Yes, okay. it is. Whoop. There it is. Yeah. We got a question. Let's be answered. Okay, <laughs> you two. We have a big question. What do Ryan Castle and a chipmunk have in common? Now you're going to find out at nine forty nine. On the Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. And now, the Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and a chipmunk have in common? Well, my other job was at Chippendales. Oh, yeah, you were good at that job. Yeah, it's just like this job. I work for dollar bills and I get to listen to Def Leppard every day. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. I still think you're better at your other job. Thanks. No it's oh, the bow tie. Something that I both like the store Steve nuts. I, <laughs> I was wondering where those pistachios went. Yeah. Well, someone's got to put the nuts yeah. somewhere. I'm saving them for winter. Yeah, you are. They both hang out with Alvin and Simon and Theodore. Oh, I hate those three. Why? Why? Because they're blanking annoying. That's why. Really? I disagree. I, I do too. Yeah. C H I P M U N K. Okay, now Alvin, you- Simon, yeah. Theodore. Okay, there were six oh, annoying. Oh, God help me. Theodore was a drummer, man. He was the coolest. Oh, was he the coolest? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So I'm glad to know we found the coolest of the chipmunks. Simon was the nerd. You'd like him. Yeah. No, I didn't like him. He ruined the entire nerd community. I would like to have him die in a science accident. I mean, that's spiritually the first. Yeah. Oh, a special episode of the chipmunks. Yeah. They're now a duo. Yeah, they, he blows up every chipmunk and then we're done. We don't have to the hear him anymore. experiment's gone wrong. Yeah. Well, Ryan Castle, uh, he's an experiment who's gone very wrong. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah. But he does have a 12-pack. BJ and Miggs play of the day. As we're packing, we're cleaning and doing all that, trying to make it look as... And luckily, I live with a clean freak, so it's been a relatively easy, like, dust clean, dirt oh, thing. Oh, I'd be happy to move into your house with the whack, because I know how your wife keeps the place. And I'm, I've been just Mr. Spackle Man. Uh, like, well, I don't want to hear about that personal part of your life, either. Like, I want to things like a little squirter tube thing, and it's like so much like it's easier than just like it's... I'm having fun filling holes in my house. That doesn't sound right. None of this is really making it sound like you're talking about moving. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How much does bankruptcy cost? Well, bankruptcy costs, of course, vary depending on what type of uh, case you're filing. There's a certain amount of of court costs and other out-of-pocket costs that you're going to have in any case. Uh, The the filing fees in a bankruptcy case are are about $300, whether you file Chapter 7 or Chapter 13. Uh, One of the things to watch out for when you're shopping for bankruptcy attorneys or or looking at the different cost options is that a lot of times, especially the really cheap uh, places, don't tell you up front about all the court costs and whatnot that you're going to have to pay in addition to the attorney fees. So make sure that you get the full picture when you're talking, when you're comparing prices of bankruptcy lawyers on what the attorney fees are, how much your court costs are going to be so that you can really make a true comparison. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. 
TCU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Talking about money with our kids often begins and ends with, how much do you need? Start by helping them learn the difference between needs, such as clothing, and wants, such as money to go to a concert. Share with them how you go about managing your money and what you are saving for and why. Don't be afraid to share the mistakes you have made along the way. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU.